systems programming in Rust best practices. In this video, we will discuss the practice of creating a library and organizing it into modules. The root of your library is lib.rs, located in the source directory. A module in your library is defined by using some form of mod and then the module name. If you end that with a semicolon, then Cargo will search for a file with the same name as the module in the same directory as lib.rs. Okay, but what about nested modules? If inside my module, we define a nested module called my submodule, that will be found in a directory with the same name as my module and a file name called my submodule.rs. This nesting pattern can be repeated over and over to an arbitrary depth. With a structure like this, you can bring the items inside of lib.rs into scope by using my project. You can bring the items in my module into scope by using my project, my module. And you can bring the items into scope from my submodule.rs by using my project, my module, my submodule. This is all great but we only use libraries from some executable binary somewhere. So let's also go over the two main ways that you can create a binary. The first way is the way that we've been using this whole course, and that's just to have a main.rs in the source directory. The name of the binary this produces is the same as the name of your project, which is my project in this example. The other main way to specify a binary is to place a file inside of the bin subdirectory of source. The name of the executable will be taken from the name of the file. So in this example, the binary is bar. The benefit of this approach is that you can add as many executables as you want. If you do this, you need to remember to specify which binary to run on the command line when you do your cargo run command. So if we put it all together, a typical project might look like this. So let's recap. This project has two binaries, bar and baz. It has a library. It has a module called my module, and it has a submodule of my module called my submodule. We have no use for an extra binary in this project, and we've already made good use of library modules. So let's go demonstrate creating a library submodule. The first thing we need to do is tell our stash module we want a submodule named timer. Next, we need to go create the directory and file for timer to be in. The directory is stats because it's the same as the stats module name and then timer.rs. It starts empty, of course, so let's go back over to stats and go down and grab our timer struct definition and implementation. So here's our data fields and our implementation. Cut those and go paste them into timer. Next, we need to go do our imports so we can see these items. So I will just auto import some of these using the IDE. If you go up, you can see it created that for us. I think that's all we need. Next, we need to go make some things public so that we can access them. Pretty much everything is public in here. So timer is public. All of these fields are public. And the function and the method that we implement are also public. So we'll just finish that up and save. That should be good to go. Let's go over here and check everything. A little bit of red here. Timer itself is now in a submodule. So let's add our use statement for timer. If we did everything right, this should work exactly like before. So piping our hello to cargo. We get a warning. Okay. So let's go clean up that warning. We don't use duration anymore in this module. So we'll just take that out, fix the brace, and then we can go back and try again. Let's echo hello to cargo run once again. No warnings this time. Great. Just run our yes just for fun. Okay, great. Looks like everything is working normally.